Ajahn Suwad often recommended before you meditate, each time before you meditate, he said, put yourself in a good mood. You know, this may sound a little backwards for many of us, try to meditate in order to put ourselves in the good mood. And he says to start out with a good mood. When you stop to think about it, there's really no way that you can get good results out of the meditation unless the mind is at least has some good qualities in it, has some cheerfulness, has some patience, has some wisdom. These are the qualities that act as seeds that allow the meditation to develop. And it's not like we're coming to the meditation totally empty-handed. We do have good qualities in the mind. And there are plenty of things that we can think about to put ourselves in a good mood. This is why we have the chant on goodwill to start out the meditation each and every time. Because goodwill is a good thing to think about. And you look at yourself spreading thoughts of goodwill and you feel good about yourself that you're not totally selfish, you're not totally angry, vindictive, whatever. There's some goodness inside you. And you take that as your starting capital. As with any investment, you have to have something to begin with. If you don't have money, at least you've got strength, or you've got your intelligence. And you take what good things you've got and you invest them. That's how they grow. So when we sit here to meditate, we do our best to make the mind patient, to lift it above its ordinary cares and concerns of the day, and then bring it to the meditation object. That way you can relate to the breath or relate to whatever your object is in a friendly way. Because when you're in a good mood, that puts the breath in good shape to begin with as well. If you feel frustrated about the breath or frustrated about your meditation, that's going to do funny things to your breath. Make it harder and harder to stay with the breath. So think in whatever way allows you to get the mind ready to meditate, in the mood to meditate. This is part of the very first basis for success, chanda, the desire to meditate. You want to, you feel an attraction to the meditation, you feel an inclination to the meditation. And if you sit down and you find yourself totally disinclined to meditate, we don't just force yourself to do it. Remind yourself of the reasons why you're doing it. Think of ways to make it interesting, ways to make it entertaining. You can do all kinds of things with the breath. In John Lee's Dharma talks, if you've ever noticed, each time he def defines the different levels of breathing and the different types of breathing in the breath, in the body, he hardly ever repeats himself. There's always something new, something different that he's found. It's not that we have to memorize his, his ways of analyzing the breath. It's a sign that we should look at our ways of analyzing and see what we find works. When you feel depressed, what kind of breathing feels good? When you feel manic, what kind of breathing feels good? When you feel lazy, what kind of breathing energizes you? When you feel tense, what kind of breathing relaxes you? Relaxes you? There's lots to explore. And in, in the exploration, you get in, absorbed in the breath without even thinking about forcing it or holding a whip over the mind. This way the mind can be on good terms with the breath. The breath can be good and it's easier and easier to settle down. So always take stock of your mind before you meditate. See what kind of shape it's in. And don't let thoughts of frustration or discouragement get into the mind. The Dalai Lama once said, 
thing that surprised him most about Westerners is their self-hatred. He said in Tibet, they are only the village idiots feel self-hatred. Of course, he said that smiling, but it's, it's a pretty harsh judgment. And the same is true, in, I noticed, in Thailand. Not so much anymore as modern culture comes in. It really does teach people to hate themselves. To feel bad about themselves it has all sorts of images of perfection that are held up and that nobody lives up to, or nobody can live up to. But in traditional culture, one of the basic skills of being a human being was to basically how to feel good about yourself, how to love yourself, how to wish yourself well. And only really stupid people were thought to would be the ones who would hate themselves. And yet that kind of stupidity now is rampant in the modern world. We'll be trying to be very careful not to pick that up. The mind has the potential for all kinds of moods. And sometimes just simply sitting and taking stock of things for a few minutes. Learning how to use your power of thought not to destroy yourself, which many of us do, but as an assistance to the meditation. We often think that meditation means to stop thinking. Well, you have to learn how to think right before you can stop thinking. Because if you're, if you're thinking in ways that are self-destructive or ways that are really harmful to yourself, you just simply stop. It's like running a truck into a wall. But if you learn how to think in ways that are for your own true benefit, like the things that we chant about every evening, it's, there are always things that are beneficial to think about. Then when the time comes to, for the mind to settle down and think less and less and less and just get more and more absorbed in the experience of the present moment, it's a lot easier. It's, there's a natural movement. So the way you prepare yourself to meditate is very important. Your attitude towards the meditation is important. Now this doesn't mean that you should meditate only when you're in a good mood, but if you're in a bad mood, think in ways that will help improve your mood and help improve your attitude toward the meditation, your attitude towards the object that you're going to be focusing on. And in that way, your thinking, instead of being a distraction, is actually a component part of the meditation. It's an important step that can't be overlooked. <laughs>